course. I feel like Why I'm not? on an episode of um, what's it? What's it called? Something in Sid. Who's those two guys oh, on Tim ESPN? And Tim and Sid. The guy that just yells and they the just time? talk oh, about yeah. sports. No, we're with, this will be dated, so we can't uh, we can't even air. Why any are that, they? So. Tim and Sid, are they still a thing? Because by the time this rules oh, out, Aaron Rodgers will so. be on some reality show and it won't matter that he's a quarterback. Dancing with the Stars again? Yeah. Did he do that already? I don't know. Mm, maybe Big Brother. Who knows? Well, on this episode of ESPN, yeah. Jonathan Molina and Adam. You have tried to be a part of New Boro. I've interviewed you before. <laughs> um... We usually start with this, how'd you get here? But you have unique perspective because you, Jonathan, who's on the show today, have the experience probably some of the people on the team don't have that you've actually worked at more than one brokerage. Some that have tried to follow this formula, some that have their own version of this formula. And you still always kind of circled back to here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that kind of history would start the top. Like, how did you get the very first, how did you get into the mortgage industry? I think a lot of it stems from Caruso. I think I'd probably name him a few times. Uh, I remember working at, I was working at Rogers for a bit, specifically Fido. And it was COVID. I was like, this is great. I don't have to work. I'm just hanging out. But I realized in the first month, I'm like, okay, hey, I, I got to do something. So I started learning a little bit more, more about money. And I'm like, I kind of like just enjoyed helping people. I realized what I like and the money thing really helped too, like learning about that. Um, and then I remember seeing Caruso one day and I'm like, like, what's up? I haven't seen him in so long. Like we went to high school together. Right. And elementary school actually. And um, and he was just telling me about what he's doing and he was in, in construction. And I actually worked for a couple of jobs with him on the side. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm completely out. Now I'm doing mortgages. And I'm like, mortgage okay and he's telling tell me like a little bit about it i think he was still fairly new here right and um i'm like damn it's like every i'm learning about money and he's and it's all we do is pretty much money right helping people out and i enjoyed helping people out in this in the industry that i was in so i'm like put two and two together i'm like this might be a great gig like it's very similar um at least i thought at the time and then i'm like perfect let me fix up my resume start something fresh because i couldn't I, it, I wasn't progressing where i was I was just, it, it was, I was at a dead end. And I even, I saw it more so also when I was talking to my manager at the time and he had like 15 years of experience there and they were like, they were not moving him up. He had a couple opportunities to, to, to move up, but they, they still brought him back to the store level. I'm like, if they're treating him like that, like where am I going? 15 years? 15 years. In the retail phone? Yeah. Look? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was tough to witness. Like, and I'm just like, I got to get out. And, and COVID was a big help because I remember just taking time to to open up a couple books and learn about different things here and there. And I'm like, I got to get out. I'm stuck. Like I'm get I'm getting older. I've been dating my girlfriend for so long now, and I'm like, I got to progress. Like I can't be stuck in this one spot. So I took the course. I took it with Mike actually because I was working with Mike. Right. And then yeah, we both applied here. Obviously, a few other places. Mike got the opportunity to work here. I went somewhere else, and it just really wasn't what, what I expected initially or sorry it it was kind of what I expected initially and then I learned quickly like the place where I started at was not where I wanted to be so they're all I tell people all and we've I mentioned this on the podcast before so I'm not gonna but it's they're set up differently right everybody mm -hmm. runs theirs and that's kind of the the way the industry allows it to be you can focus on one segment of the market, you can decide to, you know, be multifaceted. You can do a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but it's all to me. It's still a people, a people business and a team building business. And I always look at it as building a team or a franchise. Who do I want on my team? And you know, the only reason you didn't get hired the first time around was a funny story. Really, is because <laughs> it's because Caruso. <laughs> was such a train wreck we weren't so sure about <laughs> him at, at the right? beginning yeah well you we already did where we were like is this guy is this guy all right and he was like oh yeah i know him he's gonna yeah, be like, good we were in a hole together on yeah. keelan rutherford yeah, yeah. And and we were like, uh 
do we want two Caruso's right now? Can we handle two Caruso's? The answer was no. So we do not have the capacity. So yeah. we went in a different direction. You went to a, diff a different brokerage and you worked there. I still kept tabs on you through Caruso and through Mikey when I found out that you also worked in new Mikey mm -hmm. to see like where you were going to go and what you were going to, because I liked you in the interview and I thought you were going to be a good fit. Um, so you go to, and we're not going to name brokerages, but you go to a brokerage, you're in that scenario where it's that they give leads or do they give leads or what's, how was that broken up? Yeah, they give us leads. I think the biggest thing was that they gave us a salary as well, which was oh, right. yeah, that comforting. Was the yeah. yeah. Well, that was my second brokerage. The first one I had known, uh, so my, my girlfriend's family has a mortgage agent that they, they always used. Went to him initially. He was like very old school. Didn't really have didn't really have the time to to sit down and teach anyone. So he had someone else do it, who was also very new in the industry. That didn't last very long. I there was there was no progression. I didn't learn anything from day one to when I when I left. I still knew the same amount. And then when I went to the other brokerage, that's where it was salaried. They give us leads, but the training was off. Like I just and. I just couldn't see myself learning. Luckily I had a great mentor, like my, I had a team lead that was there. That was great. He was teaching me a lot. He was been in the industry. He was in accounting. Like he, he knew a lot, lot about the industry and I was lucky to have, have him. And I still have him around. We still, we just still definitely talk, but that the actual brokerage itself, I just couldn't see myself in it. Like the salary was one thing. It was comforting with that, but just the way we handled the leads, it's, it, or even just helping people, like quote unquote helping people, it just wasn't the same. It's not, it's not here. Which is funny because after you came and you finally joined here from that brokerage to another brokerage to here, I, it was a mass X, a rush of, I kept looking at him like, hey, Jonathan, do you know this guy from X? Because mm -hmm. this guy or this girl's applying from here. What's happening over there? Why all of a sudden are these people applying elsewhere or leaving what's going on and yeah. i interviewed some of them too even like yeah. they went through the interview process so it's the salary portion has been something that a couple of brokerage models have tried to to adapt and sign on with and and kind of make that work i haven't seen it really work yet no. except maybe one i think it works in theory for people who are taking that transition or step where it's like, I'm really used to a salary. I'm used to that level of comfort. But I think the once you gain experience in the industry and you start to connect with other agents at different brokerages, you realize that like that model isn't necessarily of value or as valuable as it's portrayed to be or initially makes you feel, especially when you have expenses and you have rent and whatnot. But it kind of creates this invisible ceiling that you don't oh, realize is there until you hit you. it and then you're like oh my god i yeah. can't believe this but again it that's it's or up to the individual agent to see your it client wants to see you at nine o'clock at night yeah it's true your salary is x to x what are you gonna say well i'm on a salary i can't meet you it creates the wrong mindset yeah. the mindset here is you have to be ready to help somebody when they need the help and when the time well, on their clock if you don't like that, then that's not the job for you. A real estate agent can't say, sorry, I only see clients on Mondays. It doesn't work. It's so when they structure these deals with, oh, you're going to get X as a salary right away. The mindset shifts to nine to five. That's what I'm making. Yeah. Client wants to see me at 630. It's not on my time. And so it creates complacency and you don't actually go chase it. And then the leads are given to you. And if you yeah. don't convert them at the right I'm going down a rabbit hole. You don't then convert them at the right conversion rate. Then they're like, why are we paying you a salary? And yeah. then it becomes this animosity where even here I get flack for the freedom, either real or perceived. And then, well, well I, do, I ha like, do I have to work on Friday? I don't know. Do you want to talk to people? Because the clients don't stop applying on Friday. If you don't, cool, we'll take you off the lead rotation. Yeah. But you can't have both. Can I yeah. log in in the morning and take Friday off? Well, that's not fair to Jonathan, who is here in the office working on grinding on a Friday. Yeah. So the models are all over the place. The first one, the first one didn't fit because there's no training. Second one, what happened at that particular? Why? What was the reason to move to the the 
third, we're the fourth, we're the last, but what, what was the reason to move to that one? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I, I believe in that sometimes you need to experience things on your own to see it. So we often interview people who sometimes decline the opportunity to work here because that's the only thing they know. So sometimes it's nice to see someone, I, what's, I don't know what the, the proper saying is, but like when something gets taken away from you, you, you value it maybe a little bit more than you did when you had it. So it's a great thing to have experience in the industry. Sometimes we've been like, I'm the anomaly where I've only worked here and I only know here. And we've had previous um, mortgage agents on the podcast who have expressed the same thing. And we can only really go off of the experiences of let's say you and our clients working with other brokerages. So we can just kind of imagine what it was like. Um, but firsthand experience, it kind of gives us reassurance that what we're doing here is right. Like you've come and you're like, listen, I had a great mentor. Um, it doesn't take away from the fact that I've learned a lot in that particular business model or with that particular individual. Um, but now I know what I should expect or what I can't expect. So those little things made you get here and obviously allowed you to expand and learn. And there's a lot of mortgage professionals that are very valuable especially other employers, it's just what really works. And I think here we've, we've nailed it, but the other, there's other, um, I guess, mortgage brokers and agents out there that we can all kind of learn from based on experience. So you get, you see the ceiling, you decide to move on. I think you, you applied again just via email, because we had still kept kind of com open communication. Yeah. Where you applied again, which would be your second time, while you were making the transition from X to Y. Yeah. And we were full, I think, at that particular time. Or I think we reached out to you and you were like, actually, I'm at this brokerage yeah. and you weren't ready to leave that brokerage, so you yeah. didn't come. Because you just started. And then you reached out and said, actually, I'm looking. We were like, actually, we're not. Yeah, I was not hiring. <laughs> and so you went to the third stop. And that was a different in experience compared to that your other one as well. What what worked about that one for you and what didn't work? It was like a good stepping stone. Like the values were there obviously it was a bit similar to here, like helping people. The leads were very similar to the ones here where, you know, people are in a really tough yeah really tough spot and we were kind of that that those people to help and it felt great it's just there's a couple of things missing um it's really lenient they're they're new like they were they were progressing like but here like we set a standard like we have to we have to all look the part right with like a, a strong believer in, and you always say it too like if you dress nicer you feel nicer um so little things were missing the commute was was a bit tough it was it was pretty far from where I was living at the time. And, um, but it just, little things were missing. And again, like talking to Mike, talking to Caruso, like how similar it was, but there were still like holes missing, it felt like. And I, and I honestly wasn't happy. The commute didn't help, but getting up every day and knowing that there was, there was little things missing. I didn't know what they were at the time until I got yeah. here and I'm like, wow, like what a difference. And yeah. I think, and I've said it to you on several occasions too, like I kind of owe it to you for giving me the opportunity. Well, you kept you kept trying, which Persistence is, is key. which, you know, like D way back in one of the episodes, right? Just kept hammering away <laughs> until we eventually, yeah. uh, you know, we eventually opened the spot. door and right? we yeah. had a spot. And I think 
that's the thing when people outright copy the model, mm -hmm. they miss things along the way. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to do this part or that yeah. part or be like this or be like that. And then they could possibly have their own yeah. success model yeah. or you're, you're left missing pieces. Yeah. I, I don't do a lot of these steps or make you guys or we yeah. don't sign up for the process and do the things we do because I love doing all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have already gone through some of those struggles and been like, actually, I screwed up here because I didn't follow this part of the process. I didn't do this. Oh, I missed a second mortgage on, the, on a purview and tried to do an A mortgage. I made a big mistake. There's reasons why we have certain things in the process. So often when people start or try and make a copy of this place, they leave all those, they leave these things out thinking they don't need them. Yeah. I think too, when it comes down to like, we're on it all the time. Like there are parts of the process that are annoying to say the least. And they take a lot of time and they're very tedious. And when people leave this place, they're like, forget that. I'm never doing that again. I can be my own boss and I'm not doing that step because I remember how annoying it was and I don't want to do it. There's a reason it's there. And when you don't have it, you see the gaping hole, like you said, in the process where you're like, I don't know what's missing. I don't know why we're not meshing or where the gap is. And only time tells, like how many trial runs and newsprint write outs do you have in your stash of things that you've canceled out? You've did it for a month and whatnot. And we're always giving him hell being like, why do you keep changing the process? I don't want to learn anything more. It's because that's where there's a need. They need to be con continuously progressing. There are going to be things that are annoying, but necessary. Um, and a lot of people try to break things that don't need fixing. So they end up with brokerages that are semi-successful or fully successful or peak and then take a nosedive. But again, it's all on learning and experience. And it's definitely a struggle when you have a mortgage agent who's looking to make the money they can relying on an employer and the employer isn't taking the initiative to create a successful model in itself. I love that. Yeah, that's exactly it. The, um, the path to get here is three or four times. You're finally hired yeah. and you're, you're in the, and this is one thing you would openly say to me, oh, yo, it's a lot like X, they did this and this one did that, but they didn't do this and they didn't do that. And that's the, like, I'm doing it for over a decade, right? There's things yeah. that we do. And you said, right? And I know Ian used to say this to me. It's like, you sometimes feel like you change a process just to change it. The client's changing. Yeah. The way they're responding and what they need. Yeah. And the marketplace is changing. The changes in the process or the changes that we make that w I'm implementing now that you can't copy until you figure, you find out about it are the things yeah. that we're already then you're behind the curve at that point. Trying to move ahead and you keep saying to me, oh, it's different here because we do this or and we didn't do it this way. And I'm, I often say it's why I don't hire people who have worked at other places because I don't, I'm not interested in the... Undoing. Yeah, not that I'm pigheaded, but I am sort of in a sense where we're going to do it this way. And if I look at the numbers later and it doesn't work, I'll take responsibility that it didn't work and we'll do it a different way. But hiring somebody with experience like the more experience you gain the less likely you would get you would be hired here because i'm looking for fresh exciting people yeah. who just want to learn and not yeah. tell me oh my other place i did it this way yeah and i that also plays into the specific type of person we're looking to hire like you coming to us four times in that back and forth persistence is what you look for in a mortgage agent. You want someone who doesn't give up. You want someone that can put up with the grind. You want someone that can strive for what they want and work to attain that goal. And that's what we look for. Um, and then the other thing too, is we've had people who have been successful that have worked at other places because they've been able to take a step back and be like, you know what? I'm willing to change. I'm willing to adopt this new process. I'm willing to see value in something else. Because we've had people who are seasoned vets in the industry who've come and made a great contribution to our team because that experience has helped. But they've also been willing to adapt and become more knowledgeable and expand their, their who? knowledge. Who are we talking about? A Mark. Mark? Yeah. 
I we, don't think so. Yeah. yeah. Mark? <laughs> okay. Is he the only only person? I yeah. think so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Mark. Yeah. Like a lot of experience. Yeah, he had a shit ton. He had more experience than I was alive. Well, he's an Basically. old man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 cancel, cancel. Um, we call on, the, <laughs> on the awkwardness uh circle, where did so we interviewed your girlfriend? Yeah. We interviewed you. And then finally, and she has she's got a new career path, which we're excited about. She works mm-hmm. at a bank, so it's really good for her. But how was that where you finally, you're the one who finally, she came twice. She wanted to also join here. Yeah, she is. And I told you, she's great. Like, yeah, she was, she was persistent. Yeah. Right? Maybe we missed out on that. I think I interviewed her twice too, I think. In person. In person. Yeah. But again, oh, yeah, I think she it was, was definitely here in person. it could but have I been right person, wrong time too. Yeah, like when she came in, it was, we didn't really have a spot. Um, she wasn't going to settle for something that she wasn't happy with. So I think it just didn't work out. But now she's successful in her own right and found her own path. And but what was it like at home when you finally get you're the like, guy? Yeah, we had a talk. <laughs> we had a talk. We we knew. I think I was more ready to to take that leap of faith and go, you know. Uh, Try one last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I know for a fact I didn't like the salary thing. Like I knew that for a fact. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll take this leap of faith where, you know, my income isn't guaranteed. She wasn't like the most comfortable with it, although she would have definitely done it. Yeah. But I'm just like, I got this. And, you know, we, we, her uncle works for the bank and, you know, we spoke to him. We had like a six hour conversation at the dinner table one day, one night. And we're like, hey, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, full steam ahead. And now we're here. You guys are unique because you're both in the you're both in the industry, still in related industries, but you've worked at different brokerages, so you have like a little bit of experience of from everything. all di- yeah. these different. Yeah. And one she worked for also very successful, right? That has this has a different setup as well. So you have a unique perspective from the whole industry that most people wouldn't have, yeah. right? especially it's like in your age. Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it feels good, but sometimes it's like it's a little hard to like break those bad tendencies that I that were being instilled with me and so I mean that was that was the biggest thing when I moved here right because everyone was just, again you hire people who are fresh who only know this process and I'm like I know little things here and there and I'm like should I say something do I you know it, it was a bit tough but you know I told myself right from the beginning I owe it to you know I got the job now like let me just forget about everything else I learned and I just fully take this on now I'm here now it happened. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, and this gives the, this opens the door to the honest because you haven't been here a full year yet. Mm-hmm. You've had a lot of experience at other places. What is it about the team and New Boro that you thought was the right fit for you? And now that you're here, what is it about what we do and how it functions that does make you feel that way? I've watched a few of the, of the other podcasts and everyone mentioned the process. It's a given. The process definitely works. There's obviously very successful people here. Um, and then I think one thing you were instilling in us when we were doing the training is like, like dig deep, like find the problem. Like it's not easy talking about debt. We're not going to, no one's going to, we're not going to pick up the phone and someone's going to, you know, give us their whole backstory and yeah. really open up. Like it's not a thing. So that was one key point where I'm like, it's different because everywhere else doesn't dig deep. Like they, it's very transactional and they give you, someone asks for a line of credit and they give you a line of credit. That was like, I think my biggest problem in the beginning. Right. Right. And then the other thing, just culture wise, I remember it was like my second week, I think. And I know there's a few of us that were, that were new. And the biggest thing I saw was the biggest eye opener. Cause I came from a toxic environment. Um, Miguel had an issue with a DLO and four people came to his aid like right away. Like, oh no, let's go watch this video. They literally brought it up on on the screen and they were helping him like, oh, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should tweak that. And I'm like, where else does this happen? Not the last place that I worked. I'll tell you that. Especially the second place that I worked at. Yeah, It was very toxic and I was very scared of being criticized. And it's different here. Now that we get criticized for, you know, to bring us down, it's just like we need to get better. Right. And that was a huge eye opener seeing Miguel go through that with everyone. With the approach to to training and making sure everyone is a part of the team, 
it has to be constructive. So criticism is one thing, but constructively giving it is a completely another, another realm. Um, the other thing is we care. So in a commission based role, rarely would someone take a fifth. They'd be like, you know what? I'm on commission. I don't have 15 minutes to spare for so-and-so exactly. to be successful. It was like you said, that's 14 or that's four people giving 12 minutes of their day yeah. to make sure that this person's on the right path. Yeah, without me without being told to do, that do it. That was the biggest thing too, without you saying anything or any of the guys yeah. who have been here long saying anything. Yeah. And we all contribute to the success of Newboro. It's not just one, it's not just two, it's not just three of us. So if one of us is successful, great. If our entire team is successful that's what we strive for um and again plays back into that family that community where everyone although we're independent and we have to build our own success you have an entire family or a village behind you trying to raise that child and get them to where they are which is unique and it's sometimes on the way out of our system an agent will maybe pick that as that's what they didn't like yeah having a goal having a target being push to be a better person and yep. care about your client. I always say all the time, if you in, in books, right? If you want to be considered interesting, try being interested in the person who's on the other end of the phone or that you're meeting on a video call because it's their life and that particular moment that you're going to have an impact on. Yeah. Other agents have been on this podcast and we talk about it all the time that you know, you see a deal, they did it somewhere else with no plan, no help, just gave them the line of credit. Yeah. And not understanding that how the credit bureau works and how the line of credit and using that for debt consolidation, I had to unprogram you when you got here. Um, yes, they qualify for a line of credit. By all means, please show them, but don't show them the line of credit until you explain the damage that it will do if they take it. Yeah. Because that client's using it for debt consolidation is going to come back a year from now thinking they did something good. And in reality, you took all the debt from one bucket, put it in the other, and their credit score is lower than when you first met them. Yeah. Whose fault is that? It's us. We're the professionals. You're supposed to be the expert. You're yeah. the guide. You're supposed to yeah. be helping these clients make the yeah. right choices yeah. or at least give them the right education. So yeah. when I do interviews and I say to people and they're brand new, you're, do you like to educate? Do you like to teach people? Are you good with you know young people and youth? Do you coach sports? Are you... Because those things matter more than the product. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like I have to sometimes drive it home so hard because that all that's all that matters. Will you educate? If you can't, don't be here. Yeah. Um, I just said to somebody this morning, I read an article, my daughter makes fun of me all the time about AI and how I'm so focused on AI. And we don't we don't put a lot of AI into what we do, but I am paying attention to it for process and automation. But the only thing AI can't do is care, have an yeah. actual connection, a human connection with somebody. Yeah. And so if you can't do that as a mortgage agent, when you're in the control of their finances and their life, yeah. what are you doing in the industry? Yeah. You shouldn't be here. Yeah. Our clients will tell us all the time. I made a five minute decision that created five years of hell. Yeah. And that's why we don't have our clients make decisions in five minutes. We have extensive conversations. We talk it through because as much as you can click a slider and we have a lot of clients who go to those high interest loan places that their iPads are super interactive, super easy. It gives them that quick fix that no one's reading the fine print. No one's expressing the consequences. No one is running them through the pros and cons of either product showing on the screen. Whereas taking that initiative takes away that element of potential damage that we aren't aware of or that our clients aren't aware of. And again, you'll hear it over and over again is I made this five minute decision and it has cost me five years of absolute hell. And it becomes this endless cycle of how am I going to get out of it? And that again, nails home why it's so important that although I, AI is great, you need to really have someone that's in your corner that's actually looking out for your best interest as opposed to just showing you that shiny object and having you move forward with that. Yeah, I think that every time I go through the process, it hits home because I'm like, my, I have people in my family who have gone through yeah. through struggles. Like I have no, like they've, they've made that five minute mistake and it's, and it's really impacted them. And I'm like, I wish there was someone on my side helping yeah. me out because then like, this person wouldn't have gone through this. And yeah. then like 
you know, at least we're there to step in and, and really help. Even if it's just, even if it doesn't go through, at least the, you know, we instilled something in them. Yeah. So I mentioned this to you before and you haven't been here a long time, but one thing that is impressive outside of this, that I tease you so much about, you go to the line of credit early mm -hmm. in your, but that's what you've been doing in the last, the last few brokerages is that a lot of your client, your deals close. So you're not, you are understanding the process and putting clients in the right product after going through the process. So that's a plus. And on the, on the other side of that, with adopting the process, you must have already, it's early, but you must have a client situation. I can think of a few oh, yeah. that you've come to me during the audit and be like, yo, this, this deal is, this is it. This is what this is about. Yeah. I think there's, there's a few, but one of them, I don't even think, Maybe you know about it, but um, this guy was him and his family were in debt about a hundred and like thirty grand, like, and it, and it, this one struck home too. Like this one was um, like the the parent. It was mostly the parents. Like they were really trying to help out the family. They had thirteen kids. True. Sure. Yeah, thirteen. Hey, he's close. I know. Hey, no. Halfway well, there. Thirteen kids, and and all all the parents wanted to do was help all their kids. A lot of them were moving away, uh, moved to a different province, and they were just you know paying for things left, right, and center. Then it all added up. COVID didn't help, and funny enough, he the the husband heard us heard the jingle on on the radio, and decided to reach out. And I say to all my clients, I'm like, I'm happy you even reached out because most people don't. Right? I know again, my family they they won't reach out. It's like an ego thing type, right? So that's like the number one thing I said to him. I'm happy you reached out because like there is a solution. He had tons of equity available. So we we got him the mortgage and you know we we expressed to him how important his you know his credit was because it was taking a huge hit. The utilization was pretty much at a hundred, and we're like we we need to change something asap. He was fully bought in, um, and I think about a month after closing, he calls the hotline. Yeah, and he called the hotline five times, and Dee turned around. He's like, someone's looking for you. And I'm like, okay. Which like, you think is trouble. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah. I immediately, I'm like, oh. Five missed calls. It's either my mom or an angry client. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't even to my phone, which was the weirdest thing. So I'm like, oh no. He's like, let me speak to a manager type. That's the all was running through my head. And I called him, like, I'm like, you have my number. Why didn't you, what, what's going on? Like, what happened? He's like, I just want to speak to someone because my credit score went, well, it's in the 700s now. It was in the low sixes. <laughs> it's like and anyone like, listening to me, my credit score went up a hundred points. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like I thought it was obviously something much worse, but no, he was just like so thankful. And he's like, I, not that he didn't believe me. He's just like, I didn't know how quick it was going to be. And yeah. I'm like, I know I told you. Hey, proof is in the pudding. It's hard to believe something that seems so unattainable. Yeah. Like it is imp like, that's why our clients testimonials and Google reviews speak to that mm -hmm. because it is hard to prove something without showing proof. Yeah. They've never seen it themselves. And if it was that easy, they're probably thinking, why isn't everyone doing it? Yeah. Right. It's kind of the, yeah, that was pretty much his reaction. He's like, this is crazy. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, well, you're obviously, obviously fortunate to have some equity to do it, but yeah, it's like, it's pretty much like an easy fix. And he was super, super thankful. I mean, he was on the brink of selling his house before hearing the jingle on the radio. And he was ready to downsize. They're, they are a little older too. So the downsize was is inevitable, but they were kind of in a panic. Like yeah. they had to sell soon because like yeah. they were struggling to make back the payments. So we bought him some time and, you know, now he's living comfortably. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, right? I've had a low credit score, so I know how it feels impossible and everybody says no and you're not so sure yeah who's going to help you or how you can get help and we joke about it all the time but uh the, the the company's built off all my mistakes right going through the process and taking a second mortgage and un not understanding it and borrowing money with zero plan and it was a really bad plan and with no plan so uh, I love it when I hear those stories, especially when you're new and you right away connect with somebody and they they call you five times and you're like, oh no, I'm gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> what did I do? That's such a great deal, but yeah. uh, it's a that's a great story, and that's that's we'll bring it to to an end to a close today. Fourth times to charm. Um, I do really uh, respect that you 
are asking life questions about you and leveling up your life for you and your family rather than just using this as a job. Yeah. yeah. You're you've made it er, an impression early that you're want to make it a career. You've asked me really tough questions, you get tough answers back and then you kind of sit on them for a while and it shows me you're not being reactive, you're planning and that's something I can get behind and help help you reach those goals that you're that you're chasing and I hope in a year from now, two years from now we get there together, but I I appreciate that you stuck around and keep yes. the persistence up to be part of the team. We're happy to have you. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you.